Hey, what's up everybody? In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how On One Photo Raw makes advanced masking techniques incredibly easy. Let's dive in and take a look. So let's start out with just some basic masking here. We're gonna apply various filters and local adjustments into specific areas of our image. And within On One Photo Raw, Super Select AI makes this an incredibly easy task to accomplish. All we have to do is hover over the regions that we want to modify, click, and we can apply any adjustment or filter to that specific subject or region. So let's say for this photograph, we just want to add in some detail and maybe boost the midtones on the scroll here. Well, we're gonna head over here to our tool well on the left-hand side. We're gonna grab Super Select AI. And now we can just hover over the regions that we want to modify. In this case, we want to apply a filter to the scroll here. So we'll select it. You can see in blue, that's indicating that this area is identified. We can then secondary click. This will pull up our filter menu. We also have local adjustments at the top. And to add in detail, we'll just go to dynamic contrast and let's just use surreal here. We'll make it really quite detailed so that we can really see the before and after when we disable and enable this filter. So you can see it's just applying this dynamic contrast filter strictly into the squirrel there. Let's grab our super select AI tool again. You can also grab it by hitting K on your keyboard and I'll just hover over the squirrel again. Let's add in an adjustment and let's just boost the midtones just a little bit. Just to create a little bit of separation between the animal subject and the background. Same thing within our adjustments here. You can see it's just applying that midtone boost right into where the squirrel is. Now let's apply an adjustment or a filter rather to the background behind the squirrel. I'll just hover over that region, secondary click, and let's add in a dark glow. Just to soften things up in that background a bit. And you can see that filter is only being applied to the region behind our subject right where we need it to be. So from there, you can also modify smaller regions within your image. If you want to modify smaller regions, maybe the eye of the scroll, just hover over that particular area, and then you can modify that smaller region as well using the same exact technique. So I'll right click and let's just bring in a little bit of exposure into that eye section there, just to make that little region pop out within the scene. So I'll zoom in so that we can see the difference here and we'll just turn this adjustment off and on. We're just bringing in a nice exposure adjustment right into that small section of eye there within our animal subject. So let's check out our before and after. And by using AI masking, we've targeted those specific regions within our image really easily and we've got a nice wildlife edit here. It's really that easy to target and adjust specific areas within your image using the AI masking inside of On One Photo Raw. Now let's dive into a sky swap where we actually replace the background within a landscape scene into a custom sky. Another amazing masking feature inside of On One Photo Raw that makes complex tasks incredibly easy is sky swap AI. It instantly detects the sky within your image, creates a mask for you. So all you have to do is pick a sky that works for that image you're working on. So let's just head into the sky tab here. And you can see SkySwap AI has already identified and created a mask for the sky within our landscape. So let's head into the sky section. And this is where we can choose the sky that we want to replace our original sky with. We can navigate to a specific category. There's a ton of amazing categories built into On One Photo Raw that you can choose from. But some of my favorites are these Occudrone options. I think they work really well within these sort of landscape scenes. Let's just choose Moody Blue here. And we can go into the sky menu and we can navigate through these different skies to see what works within the image that we're modifying. I kind of like something like this. But the great thing about Photo Raw and SkySwap AI is you can just go through and pick any sky that works within your scene. Everything is all non-destructive, so feel free to just play around and experiment 
and see what works within your image. So let's maybe use this one. This one looks pretty similar to the original sky that we had with just a little bit more interest there. But again, you can always go in and fine tune and pick which sky you want just by opening up the sky menu. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna match up a little bit of the look of my foreground with the look of the background because there are quite a bit of brighter whites in there. I'm gonna go into my tone and color I'm going to add in some contrast, boost the midtones of hair, and then just boost the whites just a little bit as well to just match up with the feel of that background sky that we are replacing our original sky with. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we have the original sky and a nice sky replacement. So that's how easy it is to swap out a sky. Let's dive into a little bit more advanced masking where we actually cut out a subject from a scene and place it into a different one. So with these two images here, let's cut out the animal from this photograph and place him in this foggy forest. To do that, I'm gonna select these two layers. We're gonna go over and choose layers. This will bring those two different images into the edit module as their own separate layers. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to select this little masking icon for our deer layer. That way we know we're actually working on the mask of the layer itself. From there, we're going to go over to our masking tools and we're going to choose the quick mask AI brush. It works very similar to the super select AI tool. You can just hover over a specific region. It will identify it and then you can either leave that region in or you can remove it from your image. So I'm gonna click and drag a little rectangle around the animal and make sure I have paint selected there. And then I can just go up to this little blue check mark and it will remove the background from behind the animal. From there, I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard. That's gonna grab me my transform tool. You can also grab it over here in your tool well. And I'm just gonna make the animal a bit smaller here so that it I can scale him into the scene a bit better. Maybe about right there looks pretty good. And then from there, we're gonna do a little bit of masking on the actual animal itself. I'm gonna grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. I'm gonna lower the opacity a bit so that I'm only removing just a smidge of the animal itself and I'll lower the brush size with the left bracket and then I'm going to choose to erase rather than paint in and we're just going to drop a couple little brushes down there to just paint away a little bit of the bottom of the legs so that it blends in with the environment a little bit more. From there we're gonna go in and use our chisel mask tool to remove any haloing that's come along with the actual animal itself. So we'll go to our masking tools. We'll go to this little option up here, this little drop down menu, and we'll choose chisel brush. With the chisel brush, it allows us to brush away the edges and chisel down the edges of our subject. So I'll zoom in here and you can see as I paint, it's removing this little edge that's surrounding the animal there. So let's just brush a little bit of this, this edge away from the antlers. And these other areas where there might just be an edge surrounding the fur. I think that looks pretty good just like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the foggy forest layer here. And we're just gonna match up the tonality with the animal itself. So let's add in some contrast and I'll actually remove maybe a bit of the exposure there. Add in some contrast and we're gonna boost the whites a little bit. So we can just match up with the contrasted look of the animal. Now what we're gonna do 
is we're going to add in a local adjustment just right below the animal to create a little bit of shadowing. We don't need much because it is a nice evenly lit landscape scene. It's very softly lit. But we're going to use a local adjustment. And we're just going to brush in this adjustment. And we can actually use a lower opacity for this. We'll go around 23. We'll just brush in a little bit of shadowing there. And we can always modify the opacity of this adjustment, but just a little bit does help to just bring in a little bit of realism to the composite there. From there, let's actually go to our deer layer here and to match the fogginess of our scene because things are really quite foggy in here and they almost have low opacity to them. We're going to lower the opacity of our deer layer to around 80. And you can see by doing that, it matches up with the overall vibe. You can see it's at 100. I go down to 81. It just makes it look so much better and much more natural within the scene by just lowering that opacity down a little bit. Now, you don't want to go too far. So I'd probably just leave it at around 80 or so. If you go too far, you're actually going to be able to see those things behind the subject itself. But lowering the opacity just a little bit, you can see it just makes the subject feel a lot more in place here and much more natural within this environment. Now, if you need to create that foggy feel within a specific subject, go down to your tone and color for the subject, and you can lower the contrast down. And that will flatten out that specific area within your scene. We could probably even lower the exposure just a little bit as well, just to make him feel as if he looks like these trees that are in the scenery. So from there, let's right click within our layers pane here. We're going to choose new stamped layer. Now what a new stamped layer does is it duplicates these layers that we were working on and then merges those duplicates into a complete layer that then we can work on as a whole. And the reason it's awesome is because you always get to keep these original layers that you were working on if you need to go back and readjust anything. So rather than merging the visible layers or merging the layers, I typically just use a new stamped layer. So let's just rename this complete. And within our complete layer, let's go into the effects tab here. And let's maybe add a LUTs filter. The reason I'm using LUTs is because when you color grade an image, especially a composite, if you color grade the entirety of the image with your new subject in it, it almost makes things a lot more consistent rather than just having one specific color in a subject stand out within a different scene. So let's go through here and just see if we can find one that works for this particular image, even black and white. A lot of times black and whites, the style helps to remove any odd colors within subjects or other environments. But we can just play through here and maybe even just punch. I think punch works pretty well. And then maybe let's add in maybe a glow to just make things a little bit dreamy and soft. And I'm digging it. I think it works really nicely. Let's just lower the opacity on that glow just a hair to around 50 or so. And I'm thinking it looks pretty nice like that. We've taken that subject from its own environment and placed it into a new one using the AI masking tools inside of Fotoraw. So it's really that easy to achieve complex edits using the advanced masking tools inside of On1 Photora. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.